Now, usually when WWE comes here to Richmond, especially when they're going to do a Raw taping, I'll sit there and think about going, I'll talk about going, I'll try to talk myself into going, and then I end up finding some bullshit excuse to be cheap and end up not going. Um, just how it's always been. But this time, with Raw coming to Richmond on Monday night, with all the commercials they were running on television the whole time, I never thought about going. I never talked about going. I never tried to convince myself to go. It was just one of those things that I just had fully convinced myself that I didn't care enough to go and feel like the WWE had done enough to deserve my money to afford me to go, if you will. So, you know, it was interesting to see that that change in perspective, and that was an example of me seeing that change of perspective. And it's funny because a lot of the times where I've had an opportunity to go to the show and then I end up not going to the show, I end up usually being pretty happy that I didn't go to the show. In this particular case, with this week's Raw, down to the good old Richmond Coliseum, I kind of wish I would have went. Yeah, I actually do. You know, one thing I will say about this week's show is that I felt like the WWE was at least putting forth a little effort. And I'm going to recognize effort and appreciate effort. Does that mean it was a great show? No. Does that mean that, you know, it automatically wipes out all the crap, even like payback from the night before? Absolutely not. Uh, should it just be about effort? And should we ignore execution, things like that? No. But at this point in time, like I've talked about before, the WWE has done such an artful and skillful job of trying to lower our standards to such a small level that you know, you're kind of left grasping for straws to try and justify why you continue to watch. You know, at this point in time, I'm trying to find reasons to justify why I continue to watch, and I know I'm not the only one. I might be one of those ones that actually acknowledges it and is open about it, but many of you are doing the same damn thing whether you want to admit it or not. But I'm glad that I actually watched this week's Raw, because I did enjoy this week's show. You know, while a lot of the formatting was still somewhat the same in terms of the amount of matches, there felt like effort throughout the night to at least shake up some of the presentation, do some different things, and I was okay with that. Like, even with the opening segment. Yeah, it's Stephanie, and it's Triple H, and da da da. But once you get past the Seth Rollins crap and the Authority crap, then it's Sheamus and Ryback, and we're talking about the IC title match in the Elimination Chamber in two weeks at Elimination Chamber, and then we've got Sheamus and Ryback squaring off. All right, fine, something a little bit fresher than the same old 15-minute Authority crap. I'm fine with that. You know, then there's even something small, like you've got... You know, you've got Barrett versus Neville, and they're actually trying to establish some type of issue between Neville and Bo Dallas, and this can work. And I like the fact that it wasn't just Bo Dallas on commentary for the match. It was Bo Dallas doing something to Neville before the match and then following up doing stuff after the match. It's these small things. Now, surely the WWE will probably lose interest in this in two or three weeks, but for the moment, again, damn it, people, I'm grasping at straws here! It was something. I mean, I could use some something, and I got a little bit of something. Uh, now, obviously, one of the big revelations of the night was that John Cena's U.S. title open challenge was answered in a way, but answered this time by Kevin Owens. Now, if you've watched this channel, you know I recently did a video about who... Uh, could actually beat Cena or should beat Cena for the U.S. title. And the name I kept coming back to was Kevin Owens. He was the guy. To me, Steen was the option, the only option, the best option, period. And from what I saw in this segment between the two of them, I feel absolutely vindicated and justified for feeling that way. To me, I could feel the dynamics. It felt like exactly how it should feel. You know, you had Cena and Steen, excuse me, Owens, playing their roles exactly how they should. You've got Owens saying, you know, technically I've been at this longer than you. I don't need your veteran advice. You just got your big break a lot earlier than I did. 
you know, and Owens is doing the type of stuff that Owens should do. And Cena's coming across, frankly, the way that Cena typically does. And what I really liked about this is I could even sense at one point in time that Cena got it and Cena felt it and Cena understood it. And that's not something that I always think that happens. And then coming off of the heels of this never-ending stupidity feud with Rusev where so many things were off about the dynamics of it, you know, here he is. To me, he's going with it. He gets it and he understands it. And this is where him as the U.S. champion can do some real good. And I love the way that they didn't actually have Cena wrestle this week, that they allowed Kevin Owens to get one over on him. And bam, now you've got people wanting to see a match for the U.S. title between the two of them at some point in time. I love this. I love so many things about this. It would felt like something that should be a big match. It felt like something that should be a big deal. It felt like something that could potentially shake up at least a little bit of the presentation in terms of what they do with the Cena character. And again, that might be me grasping for straws. But again, people, what other choice do I have? I've got to grasp, grasp, grasp away. Now, am I disappointed to find out apparently that these two will be wrestling at Elimination Chamber? Yes. This is the type of stuff to me that you should be doing at a SummerSlam or a Survivor Series. Let this be the introduction and then wait. Let it simmer. Put it on the back burner a little bit. Let it fester. Just because you can do something doesn't mean that you should do something. Just because it can work right now doesn't mean that it's going to work the best right now or that you should do it right now. Anytime you want to go with Owens and Cena, to me, it's going to work, and it's going to work very well. But it doesn't need to be right now. So I'm frustrated in the sense that the WWE, on the one hand, goes the way that I want them to go with the guy I want them to go with it. But then they're kind of rushing into this. So my hope is, is that if they are actually going to do this match at Elimination Chamber, it has some washy finish where Owens does something to get DQ'd, he gets counted out, or Cena gets counted out, you know, whatever the case might be. Something that doesn't have a clear, decisive finish, so that way you have an excuse down the road for them to have another match at a bigger show, like a SummerSlam, which is where this match, frankly, needs to happen. I do like the fact, also, that you're bringing your NXT champion on, and you're cross-promoting your show takeover on the WWE Network for later on in the week. This is the type of cross-promotion WWE used to do so well. You've got the NXT champion standing on top of the U.S. title, sitting there and saying, hey, this NXT title fucking matters, and NXT fucking matters. And again, I'm down with that. I love so many things about this. This, to me, made the entire night. No, it doesn't make three hours of the show good. And it doesn't make it okay to have to sit through three hours. But this is what the WWE does. This is typical WWE in a lot of ways. They will sit there and expect you to sit through three hours of crap. And you'll get one thing that sucks you in. They'll give you that one thing that hooks you. That one thing that leaves you hopeful. Now, usually you end up being disappointed later on down the road. But for that moment, man, you get caught up in it. And it's fucking awesome. And based off of the reaction I saw, I told you, I told you. But then we get to something like what happened between Lana and Rusev. And again, at least it was something else to break up the monotony of the show's formatting in terms of there were multiple segments that were not matches involving Rusev and Lana, and I'm fine with that. However, I don't like what they're doing here on several different levels. Number one, just because you can break them up doesn't mean you should break them up. Just because you think it might work right now doesn't mean that it will work right now or that it should work right now. To me, this is one of these knee-jerk reflex reactions because Lana's getting this big baby face reaction and now they're going to focus on her even though she's not really established as a wrestler, so what the hell are you really going to do with her? And then this could lead to Rusev, a guy you've put a lot into over the course of a year, uh, being left behind. You know, basically getting that Umaga treatment, that type of shit that many of us, myself included, most especially, were expecting to see. But what frustrates me about this is several different things. Number one is that, you know, now that Lana's getting real babyface reaction, what better time to change the dynamics of the Rusev-Lana relationship 
where you still keep them together, but now you're changing in terms of Rusev taking over more of the control and kind of playing off of that Macho Man Elizabeth type of dynamic in the sense that now Lana is the heater for Rusev. And when you need to get Rusev heat, you just turn them on Lana and there you go. And it works. Now sometimes it's the simple things that work the best. That's the direction I think they should be going with these two, not in the direction that they are going with these two. Now we actually get to the dynamics of the split between Rusev and Lana. Now, what I don't understand is, is that Lana was the one wearing the pants, wearing the panties in the relationship. She was the one in charge. She was the one that controlled Rusev. She's the one that dictated what Rusev did and when. She was the mouthpiece. She was the leader. She was all this. And now all of a sudden, Rusev mad, and she's a basically a cowering bitch. You know, I can understand if some people were thrown off by this or put off by this a little bit because they kind of viewed it as sexism by the WWE. It's now Lana is dependent upon a man and she's intimidated by a man. Even though the whole time leading up to this, she's been the one in charge. Now all of a sudden we've split the dynamics. It, it just it doesn't work to me. The next thing that I don't particularly like, and again, it, I've talked about it before on another channel and other videos talking about the double standards in our society in terms of domestic violence. Now we've got Lana slapping Rusev, and this is something that's supposed to be celebrated. This is something that's supposed to be good. No, that would be, in the context of that type of relationship, that would be assault. That would be a domestic violence situation. I don't see why so many people are excited about this. Yet, if Rusev would have been the one to smack Lana or rough up, rough up Lana, which the story would actually indicate is needed and would actually be called for in this particular instance, uh, then it would have been outrage. People would have exploded Twitter and everything else. I hate that shit. Women shouldn't be allowed to slap men the same way men shouldn't be allowed to smack women. It's just not cool, period. But we are talking about wrestling. I get that. Again, though, just focusing on the pure dynamics of it, it works so much better if you're going to do that to have Rusev be the one to rough up Lana, whether that be grabbing her, whether that be shaking her, whether that be an actual, you know, intimated that he's going to smack the shit out of her and somebody runs out and makes the save. Now you can still be sitting there talking about the damsel in distress thing, but again, I think the dynamics of it works so much better. But then we get to the shit later on in the night, and now here comes Lana out to, of all people, Dolph fucking Ziggler. And I know a lot of the hardcores are all happy about this, and they've got half-hard erections over this, but this shit's fucking stupid. So now, instead of her being the one that's in charge of Rusev and being the one that calls the shots and being really kind of an, imi an instance of art imitating life, because let's face it, fellas, most of us are P-dubbed to some degree. We are pussy whip. The ladies run the show. 80% of the time, the ladies are right 100% of the time. It's just about us as guys grasping to that 20% and making sure that that 20% we stand by and it's firm and that's the fuck away it is and you don't like it, bitch, then suck my dick. It's that simple. This whole notion that the WWE always has that the guy always calls the shots and the guy is the intimidator is not based on reality in any way, shape, or form. It just isn't. So it's ludicrous now to sit there and have Lana be scared and intimidated of Rusev instead of Rusev being scared and intimidated of Lana. Hell hath no fury like a woman's score. Never heard that, WWE? I get the whole thing of wanting to mindfuck Rusev and wanting to sit there and do this. <coughs> Excuse me. But now you just basically made out Lana to be what you do with so many others like AJ Lee and the like. And you just made her out to be a bit of a whore. Now she's talking about her feelings for Rusev, but yet here he is, she is an hour later kissing some other dude. Yes, that's the type of shit that women do do in real life. I will grant you that, and I, I, I assure you that's true. But we don't need to do that. And furthermore, from the Dolph Ziggler character standpoint, when is sticking him with a woman ever worked? Of all the people you could stick Lana with, you stick him with Dolph Ziggler? Knowing damn good and well you couldn't give two flying fucks about this guy? At least if you were going to stick Lana with somebody, make it somebody that you give a fuck about. You don't give a fuck about Dolph Ziggler. So don't stick her with Dolph Ziggler. She had another woman that's going to be a weight and an anchor on Dolph Ziggler where he gets outshined by the women, he gets outfocused by the woman, and it just ends up being an epic disaster.
I know a lot of you hardcores are going to beat off to this shit because you think it's awesome, but it's fucking not. It's stupid. And just the dynamics of so many things of the split between Lana and Rusev, I think, are unnecessary, uncalled for, and off the mark. Um, now we get to the whole thing revolving around the uh, World Heavyweight Championship. At least we seem to be backing off a little bit when it comes to Kane, at least a little bit, even though we're still teasing some of that animus between him and Seth Rollins. You know, they're diving into Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins, and I'm fine with that. I'm okay with that because at this point in time, it would seem like, at least to me, that the WWE is trying to sit there and just stem the tide and hold the fort until they get to SummerSlam where they're going to have Lesnar in their mind hopefully take the belt off of Rollins. I don't really know what the fuck they're going to do here at this point in time. You know, just as I watch this show, you know, they try to make it work with Seth Rollins, and in a lot of ways it should work. But this is where the WWE runs into problems. They cross a line. And they go from having a guy that's a dastardly heel, that's a smart heel, that always manages to escape, to being a weak heel and a weak villain and a chicken shit villain that's hard to take seriously to now you get to the point of, yes, in theory you want somebody else to be champion. But you're not necessarily in a big hurry to pay money to say see somebody beat Seth Rollins to become the new champion. The whole purpose of doing things with Seth Rollins is to get it to the point where you can get people to pay money to see somebody beat him to become the new champion. You know, when people just want a new champion and they don't care how it happens, you're not really accomplishing what needs to be accomplished. And it's just not really working. Now, thankfully for Rollins, the dynamics between him and Ambrose are always going to be good, and they most certainly were again on this show. The architect of a dream stuff, that was funny for what they did, you know, and praise God, once again, it's another segment for him to get on. He's opening, he's closing, because that's what God does, I guess. You know, but the funny thing is, as much as I wasn't looking forward to payback, this throwaway show, Elimination Chamber, which I'm not really sure, is this is just a filler pay-per-view? Or is this a regular pay-per-view and they're not doing one in June? I haven't really looked. I haven't cared to look. I haven't really paid attention. But I care about this show now more than I did Payback, Extreme Rules, and dare I say, WrestleMania. Already based off of what they've done. You've got Kevin Owens versus John Cena. You're going to have an IC title and a tag title, Elimination Chamber match. And you're giving me Dean Ambrose versus Seth Rollins for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship from the sounds of it. I'm fine with that. It's interesting to me how the WWE can still manage to give a fuck and still manage to at times make me give a fuck when they want to. This is the whole frustration of it. They don't have to be perfect. They just have to be better. This week they were better. It's amazing how much differently I view things uh, when they give it a shit, when they put forth some effort, because it pays off in a big way. And it did this week. While, again, I didn't like everything that they did, especially what they did with Lana and Rusev, and a lot of the rest of the show is still the same type of repetitive crap, there was enough in there, and there was enough you know, creative elements to the show, and most especially carried to me by the Kevin Owens-John Cena segment, to make this an enjoyable show for me to watch. Gave me enough peaks to deal with the valleys, and I was able to sit there at the end of three hours and say, like, hey, you know, I don't feel like a waste of my time this week. And when it comes to today's WWE, that's something I more often than not can't say about their product.